So this comes from Rudyard Kipling's Just So Stories and is the tale of how the camel got his hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. And besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most excruciatingly idle. And when anybody spoke to him, he said, Hmph. Just, Hmph. And no more. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Hmph, said the camel. And the horse went away and told the man. Presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, uh, come and fetch like the rest of us. Hmph, said the camel. And the dog went away and told the man. Presently the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck and said, Camel, oh camel, come and plough like the rest of us. Hmph, said the camel. And the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, 303, I'm very sorry for you with the world so new and all, but that humph thing in the desert can't work. I would have been here by now, so I'm going to leave him alone. And you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry with the world so new and all. And they held a palaver and an indaba and a pachiat and a powwow on the edge of the desert. And the camel came, chewing milkweed, most excruciating the idol. And he laughed at them and said, Hmph. And then he went away again. Presently, there came along the Dijin in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Dijins always travel that way because it is magic. And he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Dijin of all deserts, said the horse. Is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the Dijin. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Phew, said the Dijin, whistling. Well, that's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He, he says, Hoof! says the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph. He won't plough, said the ox. Very good, said the Dijin. Well, I'll humph him if you'll kindly wait a minute. The Dijin rolled himself up in his dust cloud and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most excruciatingly idle looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the Dijin. Oh, what's this I hear of you doing no work with the world so new and all? Poof, <laughs> said the camel. The Dijin sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think a great magic, while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work every since Monday morning, all on account of excruciating the idleness, said the Dijin. And he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Poof, <laughs> said the camel. I wouldn't say that again if I were you, said the Dijin. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, hmph, again. But no sooner had he said it, when he saw his back, that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great lolloping hoomph. Do you see that? said the Dijin. That's your very own hoomph that you bought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday. You've done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. Well, how can I? said the camel. With, with, with his humph on my back. That's made of purpose, said the Dijin. All because you missed those three days. You'll be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your humph. And don't you ever say I did nothing for you. Come out of the desert, go to the three and behave. Humph yourself. And so the camel humped himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a humph, 
we call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings, but he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world, and he has never yet learned how to behave.